All right, we should be good now. Let's get out of this. Go back to the channel. All right, I think we good. I think we good now. Let me check my sound. Oh, not on. All right, sound is on. All right, let me go to Facebook real quick. Give me two seconds and then we'll get started. You know what? StreamYard is, you know, StreamYard, you're sucking right now. And I'm not going to be using you for my streams when I have to bring other people in. Uh, let me go to Facebook real quick. Give me two seconds. So where's Facebook? Where are you located on the screen? I know Facebook is around here somewhere. Well, yeah, Facebook. Facebook is not on here. Let's see Facebook. There we go. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Ask app not to track. Appreciate y'all uh, with taking time out with me with this. I got. I just have to switch some things up. Hmm. Looking for my other page. Joe Sky Show. There we go. All right, we back. We back. We back. I see I see I'm on Facebook. Okay, we cool on Facebook. Good, good, good. Let let me let me run the Facebook real quick and put the link in. Um once again, StreamYard, you suck. You suck majorly right now. You had me wait cuz see, you know, I do everything on a time schedule. And it messed my timing completely up. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, that's here. Even people throughout the world who are not part of the black community and love the show, they completely messed up my time in the day. So we're we going to make do, though. We're going to make do. We're going to make do. But while I'm, while I'm going to Facebook to put this link in real quick, um, we won't have a show for two weeks. Two weeks. Um, I'm not going to be here for two weeks. I'm not, I'm not going to be here. I'm going to be going to the, uh, the, the motherland. And uh, going to go and take some time in the motherland, enjoy, enjoy myself, enjoy my time. And uh, hold on, let me expand this real quick. Ar Arizona, Arizona. Okay, I I'm looking at people on Facebook, but I'm trying to. Give me a second. I'm putting my comment on here like join. Hey, the lies. There you the go. Lies. There you go. The lies. I'm telling you. Trifling. That was funny, y'all. All right. Boom. That's there. That's the link to the show. If you want to join, um, it's there. I thought I thought maybe I could have done it somewhere else. All right. Boom. That's there. That's the link to the show. If you want to join, um, all right. Good. We good on Facebook. We good it's over there. here I'll on the uh, YouTube streets. Else. All right. Boom. We look good there. here. All right. That's the link to the good, show. Good, good, good. Let me let me go back to my, my trusty screen here. All right, good. We good on Facebook. And then we're going we good to over uh, here on get started. The, uh, YouTube we got Facebook right. here. And Boom. we got we look good here. over here. All right. Perfect. That's the link to the show. Good, good, good. Let me let me go back to my, my trusty screen here. All right, good. We good on Facebook. And then we're going we good to over here. Uh, get started. The, uh, YouTube we got Facebook All right. here. All right, that way you're not hearing double things from me. Cool. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Sorry about all that technical difficulties, but but we here, but we here. Um, as you can see the title and I, and I told you earlier, we'd be gone for two weeks. Uh, your, br your brother going to, uh, South Africa for about two weeks. Uh, so well, at least two Sundays, I won't be here. I'll pick up, uh, on the 26th, everything go right. I have a sister, uh, from Columbia that come talk to some of you brothers about, uh, Columbia and why you should go get your wife in Columbia. 
Um, I interviewed her on my news channel and I'm just kind of waiting on that. She also going to put like a little clip of that here on this channel. Um, I think some of you brothers will be interested in that. We're going to get to Michael B. Jordan and all of that, but I got about, I don't know if it's six to seven more videos that's going to be uploaded. Um, and we, of course we're talking about the reaction to passport bro, of course, but it's a, but after those sets of videos that come in, it's going to be, um, I'm no longer going to use the term passport bro. I'm not going to use the term passport bro for a lot of reasons. Passport bro is a great thing to get started, but it needs to transition into something bigger than just passport bro. Let's call it what it is. Once you find the woman, okay, fine. You got her. Is it supposed to end there or is it supposed to be a continuation? Once you get the wife that you're looking for, right? We can't have it just be all about finding a woman. Listen, men have been getting women for millions of years. That's not the biggest accomplishment ever as a man in the world. And we should not make that the biggest accomplishment in the world is get a woman. Now, of course you can get your wife and you love your wife and love your family and your wife could be a great addition. It can be, you know, your right hand. It can be the best blessing that God's ever given you. I'm not taking away from that, but what I'm saying is, okay, now you got that wife. How do you build something? How do you keep her? How do you legal leave a legacy for your children or future children that you have with that wife? Are you being productive as a man? Are you creating opportunities for other people in the earth? Are you doing that? So what I'm saying is you, we need to get now password bro is great, but we need to move to, from the term, in my opinion, password bro to a passport King, in my opinion. Now the term King, a lot of brothers recognize the term King. You know, we always talk about the Kings and Queens deal. But it's true. A lot, yes, there was a lot of African kings. It were, and you look at the Black Panther. Um, what did they went to? Talking about he's the king to Chala, and we had something that's recognizable at least within our community. So, when you are a passport king, not only are you getting a woman, but you're getting the property, you're establishing businesses, you are hiring employees, and you're doing this in multiple countries doing what you got to do as a man to expand. If you're going to leave the United States, then you need to be on your, your King ish, right? And not only just get the woman, but get everything. I don't want this just to be a conversation about women all the time about just getting a woman. Listen, once you left that modern woman in America, cool. You left her, you got your woman. What else you going to do, bro? If you can't, once you got your woman, are you going to still talk about them over here? Or are you going to try to, progress and expand with the new woman you got. Cause eventually a new woman you got may be like, okay, well you got me. I mean, so why you keep on talking about all of that? Right? So we're going to expand more on that as time go along. But after those set of videos, I'm not using that term password bro no more. I'm not now you could use it, but I'm not going to use it. So there are people use it. I've always been one to try to shift things, move things. I've done it over the years and it's always worked great. Now, that's right. Create a kingdom. Earl say create a kingdom. And that's what you should be doing as a man, creating your own personal kingdom. Now I want to say this up front because some, some of the, some of the, the, the ladies on Facebook within the community, you know, I had some time to lay around and look at a few comments, right? And let me, let me give you a little background on me. Just, just a little bit. I do. I do very well in the United States of America. I don't have to leave here to go have a better life. Don't have to. One asked me who elected me to be the spokesman of black men. I elected myself. That's who elected me. I see. I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to, to, to Brad and, and his ilk to get permission. Like a lot of you are see a man. What he do, he just speak. That's what men do. Men take a stand. Men stand up. Men been doing this for millions of years. We don't need permission from nobody. We sure don't need permission from you. You the last one that we, that we need a permission from as a man to speak up on different issues and problems. A lot of you who's, who's making comments like that 
And this thing, the reason why I made sure to take my time to put that link up on Facebook, all of you in that comment section, that got something to say you, you, this is your time. Let me, let me talk about Michael B. Jordan. And then I will let you come up and you, whatever you were saying, or you disagree with me. You don't have to agree with me, but you can come on up and have that conversation. Matter of fact, if, it, if you want it, I'll even make a smoke show for you. And that's all it'll be about. You coming up here disagreeing, but the interesting part is everybody got something to say in the comments section. But when I give an opportunity to come and talk to me right now in front of everybody, you don't want to do it. Or, or it's not people that, I think so far only one guy came up to disagree with me. One. Other than that, I'm talking about these ladies that, that comes up, especially on Facebook. They look vicious on Facebook. Very, very vicious. Come on up here and say something. But let me talk about Michael B. Jordan, and I'm going to really give you something to say here in a minute. So, Michael B. Jordan, let's get to him. Let me go check on my people uh, 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 on, on Facebook real quick, see what they, at, what they got going on. Okay, cool. We good, we good, we good. All right, make sure, make sure, make sure the link to the show is still down there. All right, awesome, awesome. Now, Michael B. Jordan, you know, he's a great actor. You know, one of his iconic roles for sure was Killmonger in Black Panther, which I love that character. He played that character so well. He embodied the anger of black America. He really did. And uh, to me, he was the hero of Black Panther, not T'Challa. Killmonger was, right? But this, this young brother has had a lot of success, a lot of success. And he went on the red carpet with, you know, advertising his new movie Creed three. And there was a young lady I seen before on love and hip hop. I, I knew who she was before she even opened her mouth. I knew who she was cause she was on love and hip hop. When I used to, you know, entertain those sort of things when I was bored, I can't watch love and hip hop anymore. It's the same thing repetitively. I don't know how that show stay on the air. But she went there to, to, to do an interview with Michael B. Jordan. Some of y'all say, I already seen the, the video. Well, fine, have you seen it? This is another thing. I don't do breaking news content. Don't do it. My content is when I put it out. I don't care if a thousand people did it. One person said, what did I do to get, why you blocked me? Because you added other YouTubers that has nothing to do with my platform and what I'm talking about in my chat. Don't do that. Who cares what another man talk about? I don't care the man talk about it the moment it happened. If I want to talk about it a year later, I'll talk about it a year later. I'm not on nobody's timetable of my own. Anyway, so let, let's let's key up real quick. Our, 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 our brother, and I'm sure you, some of you have seen this footage, some of you have not, but I, I'll play it and, and, and I want to pay attention to some things of Michael B. Jordan here, and I'll talk about myself as well in the midst of this, especially some of you on Facebook. I'm talking about you ladies. Michelle, we got Michael B. Jordan, the director and the star of Creed 3. And you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no, I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. Well, okay. Now you would, you would ask a question. Why would Michael B. Jordan after all these years, remember her, remember that she called him a corny kid back in the day. Now, of course, these modern women who have no care for any kind of man who feel we only good for a resource for them and not really human beings would understand that men can get bullied as well men can be disrespected as well. And when it comes to people within your own community, it stings a little more. Listen, if it was some, some white female said it, he wouldn't even remember that. If it was some Hispanic, some Asians or any other group, he probably wouldn't even care. But this, and this is the thing, the females in our community. Now, if you never did this, I'm not talking about you, but the females in our community have a way of, not only saying something to you, but it's kind of like they have a way of digging a knife right in it to you. And they know how to say it to you. And it's not like they don't say it one time to you too. Cause it's not like he's heard it one time. That was the end of it. No, every time that he came around, those females was calling him corny. 
and it becomes a cycle of abuse that happens to a lot of these black men. But let's, let's continue. You did not hear me say, I said we well, used to make fun of the name, but yeah. Now you see, he said, what's up? Like that, you see? And he's handling it actually pretty well. Now look at him and look at her. He's the worldwide superstar millionaire. And where is she at? On a podcast, not making no money. It's what he's making. And not, and not even in the, in the situation that he's in. Corny kid, he won, didn't he? He is obviously killing things out here. How is the different restaurant here? Oh uh, man, uh, whatever hotel I'm in, their restaurant. <laughs> well, you're not corny anymore. <laughs> oh God. Why is it that y'all don't know how to shut up? I never understood that. Like, look, the man already didn't called you out about calling him corny. Instead of leaving it alone and just doing the interview, when the man walks off, you say, <laughs> you're not corny anymore. I'm telling you, some of you sisters in the community, you would get a lot further in life if you just bridle your tongue. If you just bridle your tongue, if you just, just, I know it's an impulse to say something. I know it's an impulse. Just be quiet. Just that's all you got to do is be quiet. That's it. I'm telling you, you would get a lot further if you just shh. Cause she didn't have to say that. You're not corny anymore. You just disrespected the man all over again. And then now on the internet, she's acting like she's the victim. She's a victim now. But, but and he didn't even approach her the way he could have approached her. He could have told her, oh yeah, I remember you from school. You called me corny. Nah, I ain't interviewing with you. Forget you. He could have did that. And he didn't. So he still has some class with the situation. But if you notice, go back to, let me, let me rewind this. Go back. I want you to watch his body language though. That's something y'all need to pay attention to. It's not so much what he was saying. It was his body language. Now, just, just, just watch. Jordan, the director and the star of Creed Three, and you know we know each other. We go way back. Now you see the way he's staring her down. He's actually staring her down. He's not even like you know how most people when they do an interview, they kind of smiling or whatever. The man is staring her down, and he and he he's turning sideways to her. He's not even giving her his front. And if you pay, if you know, if you ever go watch Black Panther. He's literally looking at her like Killmonger right now. Pay attention to the look he got in his eyes. Way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? What a corny kid, right? <laughs> no. Did y'all? He literally acting like Killmonger, and people, I, I say, oh, is he acting like Killmonger right now? I say, look at the way he's looking at, and the way he's responding. Look, look, look let's keep playing. It. <laughs> I did not say that. Oh, Misquoted for sure. No, I heard it. No, you did not hear me say, I said we used to make fun of the name, but yeah, he is obviously. You, you see, you see that y'all ain't paying attention to that. See, see, uh, uh, ladies, let me tell you something. Men never forget. A lot, lot, lot of men don't forget when you call them corny, when you call them broke, when you call them poor, they don't forget. You think, you think, and this, and this the thing, y'all, I've seen it. These same little women, a little, little girls in school that called you all these names, fellas, look at them today and, and, and look at you. Look at them. Now let's go back to Michael B. Jordan and I, I, I'll drive home on that in a minute. For a while. You remember they kept shaming Michael B. Jordan for the women that he was dating? They would say, he never dates a black woman. He never dates a black woman. He always was some white girl, some Latina. He, he's with some this one, he's some that one. And then you remember they, they kept shaming him about that until the point he got Laurie Harvey, right? You remember that? He gets with Laurie Harvey. He say, hey, you know, I want to be with her. I want to marry her. Oh, boy. She say, oh, hell no. I'm out of here. Y'all really shame that man to be with that woman and look what she did. And the guy she with now is not even equal to Michael B. Jordan in no way, shape, form, or fashion. She could have had him. 
So the women he was dating before, now we know some of his story about he was calling him a corny kid because he was walking around with headshots and things like that. Was he kind of turned off a little bit about, uh, about because of the treatment by, by the females in our community? And he didn't want to deal with them too much because of being called corny and being, you know what I'm saying? And then on top of that, the simps add to it. Cause the, you know, the simps, they're going to add to that too. Was it that way? Was it when the white girl came around or the Latino or the Asian or whoever else, did they call him corny or did they treat him nice? It's just a question. Did they call him corny? Now I could talk about myself for a minute here. Let me, let me, let me scroll down and check out what y'all are talking about. Hold on. Let me, let me acknowledge a person here. Uh, they don't know how uncle Phil the probably they never taught is a Neil young is generational. I don't care what it is, bro. Mike. I think his name is Mike. I, I don't, I don't care what it is. Don't care. Every person that you call nerdy, corny, etc. I'm talking about the brothers. What are you at today? Most of them are successful. And where are you dusty? Got nothing going on and broke. In our community, if you listen to any female or even the dudes for that matter, they're not the female, but the dudes, because you're getting your schoolwork, you're corny for that. If you're listening to people that tell you showing up to class on time or even coming to school is corny or lame, or if you're excited about math class, you're excited about science, but they call that lame and corny. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you didn't have a whole lot. And that same, and those same people are teasing you, calling you lame, corny, or oh, you're broke. You don't have anything. We need to get to a point that we don't honor the words of people that's just don't even have no room to talk. You're not getting your education. You're not showing up to school on time. School for you is, is a, is a hangout spot and not an education place. And then later in life, we see these same people getting drug addictions, go to prison, be three or fours, have a bunch of baby daddies, send them the same dudes that call you lame got about seven, eight kids with seven, eight different women, but you don't have any of that. You successful. Now, how many of you in the chat can, can, can relate to some of that? Now let's, let's tell you, let's tell you what, let me tell you, let me tell you something. I had this conversation the other day with my wife, actually, when I was going to do this particular stream. I never been called the name corny because we in the South, we don't use the term corny in the South. That must be some East East term or I don't know, whatever we, we in the South, but I didn't relate to a lot of these people. I didn't have no tattoos. I have no tattoos now. I never got high on no drug, none smoking no weed, no nothing. I don't even know how it feels to be drunk on alcohol. Do have I drink alcohol before? Sure. But I've always been one to social drink because I never liked seeing people drunk in public. I never liked seeing people high. I never liked that. That was nothing for me. I've always one that have been say, let me work hard because I don't want to be poor. Cause I remember at one point in time in my life when I had to wear clothes the same, same time in the, in the week and pointing out, they pointing out that you wearing the same clothes in a week, not dirty though, but in a week, or you can't really afford haircuts at times like that. So you, you know, hair looking jacked up. I remember that. I remember it. I remember one individual fella. He used to he won't talk about anybody that didn't have what he had at the time. And when there was any new Jordans that came out, 
Everybody just knew go look at him because he going to have them. Matter of fact, his auntie would go to Foot Locker when they were releasing about 10 in the morning. We talking about when Jordan was actually wearing them, not today. Y'all, none of y'all never seen Jordan play or anything. We talking about when the Jordans first came out, right? All of them. Name them. We talking about that time period. And his auntie would bring him to Jordan's to school. He would have all the new stuff and he would rag on anybody that didn't have what he had. He would call people broke. He called people poor and all that sort of thing. Well, Facebook tells a whole lot of tales. Seen this individual on Facebook and oh, he looks so dusty today and he looks broke. He don't look nothing like he did back in that time period. You could tell he's struggling. You know, he called me that name. Guess what? I'm not in that position today. And if I want to go buy some shoes, I can go buy any pair I want to today if I want to, but I don't waste my money on silly things. I refuse to, you know, there was females that had called me names too. And guess what happened to a lot of these females looking bad off. Some of them died. Some of them gained about 120 pounds. Don't have no man or anything. See fellas, when they're calling your names in school, all you gotta do is apply yourself and win and win. See, they thought they were winning in high school. You won in life. They your age and, and, and everything, and they ain't got nothing. They don't have anything. Them same, them same little women and little girl at the time, they, the, uh, let's say women, but young girls at the time when you was in school, they wouldn't give you the time of day. Some of y'all, they didn't jump in y'all DMs. Hey, how you doing? You know, I was always, I, I see what you're doing today, but I'm real proud of you. Huh? Where you come from? I ain't talked to you in years. What you mean you proud of, hey, I know him. Why are you in the comment section saying you know me? I, mean, I ain't talked to you. And, that, and that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it, fellas. That's the beauty of it. And on top of that, on top of that, not only you win and they lose, but also you have freedom, freedom of movement that they don't even have. When some of these little women get, get upset at you passport Kings, cause that's what you are. You're building a kingdom elsewhere. Cause that's what you got to do. You got to remove yourself from Cause in America, you can't really build a kingdom here, just a system. But when you get on them planes <laughs> and you go and build your kingdom elsewhere, all they can do is hate from abroad. They were the same ones, the same ones that's criticizing you right now. You passport Kings. It's the same ones that was calling, maybe not you, but another little brother that was taking care of his business. Corny, lame, broke, poor, teasing him by things that he couldn't help at the time period. That's the same ones because women that didn't do that, Women that, that actually were good people and they were, and they were many They notice they're not the ones making videos about you. They're not saying ugly words about you. They're not getting upset with you. They didn't get upset with Kevin Samuels either or any other man because they still talking about Kevin Samuels. Let that man rest. They still demonizing this man. Now recently the new guy they demonizing is Andrew Tate because there's some, uh, I don't know if it's rumors or truth. Somebody he's dealing with a, a, a cancer issue. Some people say he got it. Some people said it was benign. I don't know. That's not even the issue. Andrew Tate didn't even talk about uh, black women at all. He talked about the system or whatever. And I know he, whatever he got going on, he getting arrested. He got to have his day in court. Once he's convicted, then we'll go somewhere else with it. But I saw them celebrating about him possibly having lung cancer. What men want to be with women like that? At least overseas, 
when people at least still follow, some of them still follow the Bible, follow the Quran or whatever else they follow. Is nothing in scripture teach you to celebrate the downfall of anybody. Even and the crazy part about it, brothers, the majority of them talking about they Christian. The Bible teaches you do not rejoice in the downfall of your enemy. And that so so they they so that's why a lot of brothers only want to go to no church. Because because look who in there. If you want to get you a good Christian woman, brothers, go. You can't get you. Now I go. Someone gonna say, "Wait a minute, brother Phil. I'm a Christian woman. Listen, it's so many of y'all that's not can't tell the difference. Y'all dress all the same. You talking about you a Christian woman and you got annihilated hair? You a Christian woman and, and, and you wearing the, the the tightest skirts, showing all your legs, showing all your breasts, but you a Christian woman? You, you're no different than, than the modern women that run around. What do you mean you're a Christian woman? Christian women are supposed to be set apart, separated from the world. We in the world, but we not of the world. And yet you want to blend in with them. Men still believe in God. Some men want to, want to, want to, uh, 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 Islamic Muslim woman. He want to build a big family, but he can't build it with you. I just done a live stream on my news channel talking about Kenya and how, how they was going in about them trying to the, the Kenya Supreme court trying to worm in LGBT in Kenya. And they're like, no, our religious leaders, Christians, Muslims, Hindus who say, no, we ain't down for that. That's not coming in here. So, so it sounds like your if brother, if you want your Christian woman, you probably need to go to Kenya and get your Christian woman. Cause they was all saying, no, we, that's not coming in here like that. And then, then on Facebook, some of you ladies, well, why are you still up here promoting these men to go to the Philippines and Thailand? When have I ever said that? The fact is y'all started talking nasty against Filipino women and Thai women. Y'all didn't say nothing about African women. Y'all started that. They start clapping back at y'all and they start telling y'all, that your man coming over here with us. We not coming over there for them. They come over here and we are glad to take them. And instead of you having a retort to them, don't come at me. I ain't got nothing to do with it. Whatever man decides to do this, whatever man decides to do that, that's on him. You're promoting them. Yes. I'm promoting them to get away from you. Yes. You are a hell raiser. Yes, I'm promoting that. I sure am. And like I got told that one on Facebook. Just because you're telling me that, now I'm about to make a thousand more bi videos about Passport Kings. Yep, I am. And I'm going to show them every, every which way why they need to get away from you. Because you're not a wife, you're not a mother. Because the real wives and mothers are married already. Got their husband. Even right here in the United States of America. Now, if a woman lost her husband because, you know, he got sick and passed away, I'm not talking about those women. They were wives or they widows. I'm not talking about those women. I'm talking about these modern women. One of them fellas the other day told me, this is the funniest thing ever. It's so easy to get a, to get one of y'all. <laughs> oh, it was so funny. I, I responded back to her. I said, yeah, it's easy to get Pookie and Ray Ray. Yeah, you hundred percent right by that. But men of upper mobility ain't checking for y'all. Check for you for what? You ain't got nothing going on. But with that being said, I could rant a little more, but I, I but I want to give y'all a chance to come on up. To come on up. And um let, let me go ahead on and fix my screen here. Kind of, I'm gonna have to kind of let me see. Move Mike will be joining the road out of here. Now, I will say this in the back chat. I see David back there. David, you need to come on screen so I can see you're a real person. Okay, I see. I see you're a real person. Okay, cool. You're not on camera. I'm letting you know. 
All right. Christian, I can see you're a real person. All right. So let me let people start coming on in and then we'll, we'll get with it. So give me a quick second. Let me kind of move myself to the side a little bit. Boom. I can let people up and let's see. We'll let my, my homeboy up here. Uh, let's let him up. Brother, can you, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I hear you just fine. All right. Just want to make sure. Oh man, how you doing today, Mr. Phillip? I'm I'm doing good. So 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 what do you think about our brother Michael B. Jordan? What do you think about him? Man, I was in the same position when I was in high school. Middle school and high school, actually. Uh yeah, you're right. They didn't use the word corny that much. They use lame or weak or whatever other downgrading terminology that they could use. And I agree with you. I've I seen some of them before, and it's like they just went, Ew. I'm trying to watch my words because of social media, and I don't want to disrespect your platform. But yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you good, bro. And so, and I'm not talk. I'm not the one to talk noise or nothing like that. But when you look back at it, you be like, hmm, yeah, okay. So, and I, I understand Michael B. Jordan, and I agree with you. It does sting a little bit more when it's your own people coming at you, you yeah. know, for no apparent reason. So, and then you wonder why this man went to other communities to try to be happy. And then when he was with a woman in this community, he got mistreated. Come on, you can't, it's like, what is he to do? What is he All to do? she had to do was marry him and check out the game. Say, see, the problem is, brother, with, with some of the sisters in our community, they don't know when to check out the game. Like, look, you got a Michael B. Jordan. He want to marry your behind. Say, that's it. I'm marrying this man because I, I know, look, she's on her way down right now. She don't even realize it. She's on, she already peaked as a woman. She, she's trending down. Instead of checking out, she still want to keep pushing the button. <laughs> See, and here's the thing, though. I could look, I look back on a lot of them. I don't know if you know where Havelstock Apartments is off of uh, 59 North and Aldean Bender. I lived there for a while and did not know what kind of apartment complexes there was. But then when I found out, I'm looking at all of these women and some of them I went to high school with. Some of them I knew right out of high school. And it's like, hmm, wow, okay. I had to remove myself from that situation. And there was, well, hold on. It, was a bu- it was a bunch of uh, 304 tricking going on? Uh, it was more than that. It was more than that. You know, can't pay they, they cheap rent, can't. But I got like five kids, about four men, all that crap. You know, a whole bunch of nonsense. Yes, of course, they was, you know, selling themselves for money. Like I said, I'm trying to watch my words for social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. I got you. And, and all of that nonsense. Look, you know, on and on and on. But yeah, I had to remove myself from the situation. And I just gradually came on up. Now I got a wife in, in the kitchen right now cooking me lunch, uh, cooking me dinner, excuse me, and uh, waiting on me. And, and they and they and they on Bissonette, right? Yep. Yes, yeah, Bissonette. For those of you not here, that that's the whole track. Yeah. That's what that's what that's. I'm letting y'all know. <laughs> so while he got a wife cooking. They the people that was talking about him was on Bissonette selling themselves. They did yeah. dealing with some pimping. And my but, wife, but, but brother, I, I appreciate you, brother. I got to get some more people in. All right, then I will talk to you later, Phil. I'll let All you right, know. brother. All right, let's uh, add David in there. David, All what's right. going on, brother? Hey, how you doing? So, uh, um, first of all, thank you so much for doing your part to bring us out the open like to magnify it this is going around all of youtube facebook and everything i assume facebook but it's like we needed this i mean hey darker skinned black women fought hard over the past like 20 years in the modeling industry to put an end to that colorism that was really messing up their future and 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 the the, the um the self-esteem of a lot of black girls so hey, great job, great job, y'all did it. Now it's our turn. We are tired. We are tired of our self-esteem being attacked by these stereotypical, really racist, you know, these racist concepts of black men. A black man should just be a black man. We should just be ourselves, be our normal selves, live our normal lives. Y'all don't want us. 
the, a lot of a lot of black women, these modern black women don't want us. So fine, let us go. Let us go and be lame and corny and whatever else with our African, Filipina, East Indian, and Latin American wives. And then you can tease us. I'm going to get a shirt that says I'm corny, lame, and all that BS, and I'm going to put a passport on it. You see what I'm saying? Because I don't need to worry about how you judge me. And that's what a lot of, like, they, they, it's like not black women, but society and the media did this little sneaky thing to try to ruin young black men's self-esteem. Oh, yeah. They almost got us. Almost got us, but Kevin Samuels destroyed it. He, he destroyed his death. It's like when he died, some 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 force went out through the universe and caused a lot of black men to go, wait a minute, for some reason, I can just go overseas. I can go overseas and, and, and I can I can do whatever I want. And I'm not talking about hooking up culture. I'm talking about getting married and, and, and having a good wife. I, dude, I am so glad that this is coming out. Thank you, Michael B. Jordan. You have you have done a great service. And to the next black celebrity and the next one and the next one that stands up against this crap. Thank you. And every black man that I see that takes it upon themselves to go out of this paradigm, I I'm so happy for you because I'm I'm you know my situation isn't good as far as like you know I'm I'm 46 years old. I'm not confident that I'm going to be able to find a wife uh, overseas at this point. I actually did the passport thing in my own way like 15 uh, 13 years ago. And it didn't really work out because brother, I didn't really brother, have much brother, guidance. Brother, brother, but brother, I'm happy brother, for it. Brother, I'm done. No, I got to ask a question. Why is Don't your self esteem so low? It's not. My self confidence. Nope. I don't know nope. if I can find a woman. And all these billions of women in the planet Earth, you mean to tell me you can't? No, no, find no, 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 no. I'm, no, no, no. I'm not saying throughout the Earth. I'm saying my situation, the dynamics of my situation, not my, not my. Capability. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't want, I've got want to responsibility. go there. Yeah, thought, yeah, yeah. I'm not trying to go there. Value. Right. So what I'm saying is, I look at other black men who succeed, and that that is good. I have I have a son. I have a son that's going to grow up, and he and his and his mom is from overseas too. And okay. I raise him to appreciate his African culture. I raise him to appreciate where, that he the, hasn't learned his mom's mom language. From? Ethiopia. Oh, Ethiopia. Okay. Yeah. And so, okay. um, so I, I raise him to, to appreciate. I don't have any issue if he learns the language, if he goes over there, if he lives there, I'll go. And so that's the mentality that uh, there's two types of black people in America now. There's two ethnic groups. There's hood and there's human. It's over. It's over. We just keep keep it oh, going yeah. after it's, a couple it's, years. It's, it's, it's a, a, it's, it's a yep. wrap. But, 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 but David, let yep. me let me let you go, man, because uh, I need to get yeah. Queen Queen up here. Queen twenty five thirty nine. I need to get her up Thank here. You. Uh, but appreciate you, bro. All right, hold on. Queen, how you doing? <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh, I watch you so much. Okay. Um. I've had a passport since I was uh, came to the country from France since I was four years old. So I'm I'm a passport sister. But okay, let me ask you a question: What what, what country is your family originally from? Haiti. Haiti. Okay, you Haitian. Okay. Yeah. Um, I probably can't really relate to the issue with modern women, but I just didn't want you to forget about the women like me that are want a good man, and we appreciate corny lame or whatever you want to call them because okay, i okay okay sister i'm glad you up here i am so glad you up here well why do do the sisters that's that, that's on your team yeah why have y'all sat by and allowed these women to be so loud and to literally represent you to the point that it's hurting you why is the sisterhood code that strong no, but what's so funny, I wasn't even going to come on here. I was ch chatting in the chat, and then you said something else. I'm going to come on because you said, how come the women, um, they're not speaking up, and there'll, there'll be women talking foul to you on Facebook, but then they don't want to show up. And I was like, you know, I'm going to show up because I just talk in the chat. I don't I don't want to be on camera and stuff like that. But the other ones that's negative, they love being on Twitter. 
I mean, whatever. They like to be on every social media platform and, and they're what people are going to think all of us think. Well, let me, let me, well, the, the question I asked you, because I, I have a second question to ask, but the first question I asked you, right? Yeah. Um, you know, t- tell me that. Why, why, why have a lot of women been quiet? Because I feel like some people can't change. And I've, in my personal life, I've met women that say lame not corny and i correct them and i say oh so what uh, a guy that's lame is a guy that doesn't have a jail record or whatever and stuff like that, and they can't answer me and so they just don't hang with me they're like oh she's different so they just don't talk to me once i put them in their place but i let them know i don't i don't like kiki key with them about stuff like that Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, well, I definitely, you know, appreciate you, you know, you coming up because, like I said, not many women that talk crap, at least on Facebook, because I'll be ready for them. I'm like, look, I will give him the floor. I say, ladies, if you come up here, I will give you the floor because that, that's the ones that do the most talking, not the men, it, it's the women, right? And the crazy part is, I see a lot of Filipinas on Facebook showing up and they, they just, they just giving the best compliments, but then you got some of these, these ones that, 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 my law, they hate black men. Yeah, that's actually been going on longer than YouTube's been out, but it just now they have a platform to say it online. Mm. Well, all thing I can say is um, in the nineties, been hearing this stuff. Lame, he's lame. Oh, he don't have. Price. Yeah, I grew up in the. I was a little kid in the eighties. In the nineties, I was. You grew up be a teenager, graduated high school in ninety seven. So, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I know all about that. And like I said earlier in the show, most of the people that said that, the females end up gaining 100 to 120 pounds. Some of them got on drugs. Some of them became baby mamas. It, it, it's not now one of them I've seen had a great end. Have you now heard one of them. four by four when they have four kids by four men, four by four? Shoot. <laughs> My friend said, you know, four by four, if they got three kids by four men, he said three by four. <laughs> but but they but they but they want the passport kings to stay here and take care of those kids by Pookie and Ray Ray and Dusty DeAndre. Oh, or Dirty D Rodney. There you go, Dirty D Rodney too. There yeah. you go. There you go. Single you know, kids. I don't got no kids. No. Got, well, good, we're well, good. Don't don't have no kids unless you get married. That's why I tell anybody. Don't have no children. Don't do it. So, sister, I thank you for coming up on, on the show and talking to us. Thank you. Keep up All the right. good. Forget the haters. All right. Well, I appreciate you, sister. Now, 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 now see, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 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 see, we still got some decent sisters out there. That was one of them. That's one of them. Now, if you can multiply that times a couple of million, then, then you wouldn't you wouldn't have nobody talking about no passport or anything. Let's get uh, who who's next here? Who's next? Who's next? Um... Our brother here. Uh, what's going on, brother? Yeah, you hear me? How you doing today, brother? I'm good. I'm good. What's, what's uh, on your mind from 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 Colombia? Oh man, it's going great. It's going great down here. Let me pull this back. Let me pull my mic back. Let me let me. You take that cut this up right here. My bad. I should know better. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear, I hear you good. So what, what okay, you think about the topic with Michael B. Jordan being called corny and all of that? And and it, uh, that was me. To some of that. I could relate to that. I could relate to what you were saying in regards. So I can't name one of the women from my one of the women from my past that rejected me for being too smart, reading books, for traveling, for being a part of the debate team or the chess club or whatever sport I was playing that rejected me. I can't find one of them right now that that's living a good life. I've run across a few of them, but every time I run across one, they're either looking like they're ready to beg me for money or I'm looking at they're they're the oldest child and their brand new child. I'm like, you still having kids? We're in our we're in a, you know you're in your forties, and, and 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 the the amazing part is, man, it and this just goes to the to the young guys out there in all sincerity, because I was the guy that was considered too good to be true. I don't know if you ever heard that one. I wasn't considered the nerdy guy. I wasn't considered the the the, the but the the jock. I was right in the middle. But I was considered too good to be true. It's got to be something wrong with him. 
he's too good. He's too smart. He's too this. So a lot of times women rejected dudes like me just because we weren't on stupidity. They couldn't find any idiocy within us. And so for you guys out there that feel like you're going through that, and I'm, I've been doing episodes lately on that man is in demand. Globally, the type of men that, that are not built for women in the United States, you actually were born, bred, and built for other countries. And I think that's the frustration that a lot of men go through. You don't realize that you were actually put on this planet for a planet. They teach us and train us to think that we were sent to a country, that God blessed us to be sent to a country. No, God blessed us to be sent on this planet. And so therefore, we need to make sure that we take advantage of all the opportunities of realizing that whatever traits that make you great may not be made for just the states. I'm going to say that one more time. Whatever traits you have that make you great may not be traits that are made for the states. A person like you guys may be made for the Philippines. You may be made like me, built for South America. You may be made like other guys built for other countries like you, like up in the UK or not. Well, we won't use the UK, but parts of Europe. So just be encouraged, guys. Just, just want to give a word of encouragement for all those guys that feel somewhat awkward or somewhat out of place or you've been talked down or looked down or can't get a date or can't nobody appreciate you in the United States. Don't worry because you were not made or built for the United States. The only mistake that you're making is this. You keep on trying to find a golden needle in a barn full of needles. I'll say that one more time before I let you go. You guys keep making the mistake of trying to find a needle, that one golden needle. But in the United States, you got to go through a burn full of needles when you were actually built and raised to be appreciated by women in other countries. And that's what that is. You're speaking a completely different language, love language, in other words, than the women in the United States can comprehend. Yeah. Yeah, and, and and when I talked about earlier about being a passport, you know, king uh, instead of just a bro. See, see, you 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 did that already. You know, you yeah. got the woman, you established yourself there. You you have businesses, correct? Absolutely. See, see, that's what I was talking about. You see, I got a credit is, line here. I got a, I got my right truck. Here. Got my credit line here, uh, so I can buy property here. All all the all the benefits, and, and I'm eligible to get my my like I mentioned before my uh, Colombian uh, citizenship this year. There you go. So 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 now you're gonna have two passports. Two passports. Yeah, and they, do you know that's do you know that's like the the rich man's flex is multiple passports. Like y'all okay. want to be talking about a G wagon. Rich people talking about multiple passports. Yeah, like Jay Z said, I got five passports. I'm never going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in countries that don't have an extradition treaty. Right, anymore. right. And I know he was just he was just joking, but it was just yeah. the fact that this brother said that he can actually do that. And so I was like, you know what? I want to have five passports, and we're going to move to my wife and I. Our goal is to move to uh, Portugal. And one of the reasons for that is we want our children, we're going to start working on having children next year. And uh, we want our children to be born with three passports, the American passport, the Colombian passport, and the Portuguese passport. And so we want from birth our kids to have more than one opportunity. Like I mentioned before, our kids are not, they will be trained and raised to realize that they belong to countries and not a country. Yeah, that's that's the way to do it, brother. You know, like I said, Portugal. Uh, okay, yeah, I see a lot of people been going over there. Uh, that's for sure. Like you know, but you know, you also can go invest. You know, those, what they call it the golden passport thing, where you yep. can invest a hundred thousand dollars and get a citizenship. Yep. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that's and that's the way to go if you're not trying to marry somebody. That that's definitely the way to go. Sometimes they even let you like you create so much business there and or whatever. It, it's it's so much because I told people I'm looking to have a, a, a citizenship in multiple, definitely African countries if I can get them to the Caribbean. Right. But you know me, I, I got to get me an African citizenship. I got to have it. I oh, I'm gonna get one it. of those too. You better believe me. That's that's the number three that we work that I'm working on. At least number three and number four citizenship. It's got to be of, of the top four uh, passports I get. It's got to be one from the motherland. I'll be so proud, so happy in regards to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, brother, I appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, Once yeah. again. You have a good one, man. All right, you too, brother. 
All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's see here. Christian, let's, let's let Christian up here. Hey, what's going on, Phil? How you been? What's going on, brother? I uh, can't complain much, you know. Um, just still hanging in there, just like putting some work in and all that stuff with like data analysis and YouTube content. You know, it's like a pain in the butt, but, you know, still hanging in there. Yes, sir. But how do I feel about the whole Michael B. Jordan situation? I've actually uh, been in his position literally all the way back to elementary school. Um, definitely, I was in the special education class from kindergarten all the way down to um, the fourth grade. Fourth through sixth, uh, seventh grade, actually, I had an A basically assisting me there because I was basically like the whole socially awkward nerd, basically having like an autistic learning disability up in the autism spectrum, Asperger's syndrome. And I always tease literally the worst, um, literally in seventh grade, literally by like a bunch of folks, you know, basically in like a majority black school, like around the time up by uh, East Ramapo, up by the New York City suburbs in Rockland County. Um, so they saw the teaching and everything. Parents actually noticed it. They actually were trying to press the principal to actually do some stuff about it. Principal basically refused, ended up moving down to a different district in the eighth grade where I was actually able to literally handle my own at that point. I grew many of the traits I had dealt with for my learning disability, thank God. Hypersensitivity is still there. But still had the social awkwardness, still there, still like didn't develop all the social cues that it yet. So I had like a very, very quiet personality. I didn't like really, even though I was like more so active in sports and everything, I didn't really go through all the crazy house parties and didn't get like a lot of invites by like a lot of people up in the high school. And many of them were literally like non black as well. So it went all the way down through college while I was still buckling down, getting through school, math and science and all. Ended up graduating with a degree in engineering. Um, my undergraduate um, got my master's in applied mathematics and statistics, and I was a PhD candidate at Howard for about a year and a half. So I thank God that I'm already in the position that I'm literally in now, literally trying to build with the potential to have like a six figure income and be of up over mobility, which I'm actually trying to build and develop a portfolio from there. But I would not worry about what other folks are doing and all these other name calling and everything. Because of what they're doing, all that stuff, the way they flake out towards you and the way they literally quietly move away from you and you've done nothing wrong and they give you all these crazy names and sit you out in the random seats and they don't want you near them, that's a reflection of who they are at the end of the day and their character, not a reflection of you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I'm glad I'm glad everything turned out for you, brother. And that, that's beautiful. So I'm going to move on to the next, next person here, brother. I appreciate you. All right. Salute. All right, original man fifty. Hey, how you doing, Phil? What's going on? Hey, everything is everything, my brother. Yeah, talk to me. What you think about Michael B. Jordan and them comments, and have you dealt with them comments in school? Oh, absolutely. I mean, like not so much high school, but uh, no, in fact, not high school at all, but junior high school. I went through, went through that in junior high school. You can imagine what that's like when you when you're adolescent, when you're that young, and have to deal with the fat jokes and the insults and everything else. You know, and just like and just like um the last gentleman right there, I was a special ed for a hot minute myself, you know, but I still persevered. And then um seventh grade, you know, that's when I started losing weight, you know, you know, then all of a sudden I started getting looks and comments from 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 the girls, you know. And unfortunately I had some friends and some friends were jealous of me. I you know, it is what it is. So I mean, through high school then you know nobody really bothered me because um you know i also i was also growing i was taller and i started lifting weights by by my senior year I, you know I, I was solid you know nobody really right. bothered me after that you know and um in regards to michael b jordan it, it's, it's funny you mention him it's funny this happened because um 2005 um he was on um all my children i was a background actor okay and even back then I mean, he was a humble dude, you know, young. I, this is like after he did The Wire, you know, he still had the braids in his head. He, he, young, he, he was never too big to, to talk to anybody. He walked by us as background actors, greeted us hello, and, and continued on to the set and waited for his scene. He was a humble dude, you know. I mean, I mean, like, I'm, I'm so proud of his um, success. He came so far, you know what I mean? And, you know, for, for <laughs> that, 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 was just a, that was just a moment in time when, when I saw that interview. You know, oh, I was a corny one, right? That's how I felt. You know, that that's how I felt toward the people that used to torment me when I was in junior high school. Oh, I was a corny one, huh? You know. Yes, sir. How many? Yeah, how, yeah. How many baby daddies do you have? Hmm? Mm -hmm. 
and have and them people that talk called your names. Have you seen some of them on Facebook? Um, no, but I mean, I, I would see. I, I used to see them in the street, like um, in the early nineties, you know. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, some some of them were doing okay. Some are not doing too well, you know. The same people that they used to tease me, you know. And I'm you know, some of them have been locked up. Some of them just, just ain't, ain't doing too well, and it's like you know. Karma has a way of, of making its way around. You know, karma makes its rounds when it comes to um, bad things. Yes, and sir. Good things. You understand? Yeah. Yes, you know what I mean? I mean, it's. <laughs> I feel you. I feel yeah, you. I was like, I was like brother, I'm gonna have to go ahead and go. I got some other people I need to get on, brother. All right, brother. All right, appreciate you. Uh, all right, let, let's get uh, Moses. Hey, Brother Phil, what's going on? Thanks for having me on. Oh, what's going on, brother? What's on your mind? Oh, man. So this has been going on the whole week since the premiere of Creed 3. So it's like, wow. I'm just glad Michael had his story pretty much shown to us all through that little interaction with the uh, Laurel. You know what I'm saying? And I think that does give a wicked call to the men who are serious that are like Michael Beat, of course, the type that uh, I think that's a good example for most young black men who are in that same space, that group with that corny they say he was. But I don't think seeing that whole thing being corny growing up i've seen that it's it's unfortunate that we have that type of example because i guess you could say i'm the christian guy because i am um i followed god when i was 18 and all that and then uh you know i kept myself from marriage you know what i'm saying and that's the main thing i believe because i realized that was a valuable thing to me even my parents didn't even know about that being a good thing because they're from like they're from west africa but i okay. think the biggest picture though i'm learning from this seeing this whole michael b situation is that uh like uh brother andre from columbia said i watched his stuff he said uh you know some stuff for us is not in the states they're not for us because you know our attitudes are unique in the sense that we got opportunities in other outside areas of these borders and i think a lot of guys should just get their passports and be willing to look outside because kevin samuels made a good video about that called uh christian feminists and that's a real thing and they're out here they're just trying to pretend christian and and act like they love God, and then they got these ideologies from the left. You know what I'm saying? So you can't be a Christian and you can't be feminist. It won't work because nope. the, the scriptures teach to submit to it, submit, and they don't. They don't. They can't. And, and feminism won't submit at all. But nope. like I said, I'm a firm believer of this. If you can't find what you're looking for in the United States, you know me. Yeah, um, I believe it. I, I see your videos. Here. You, hey, you're not lying. I've, I've I've been debating about the ones I've talked to. Here. I'm like, this it's like the same old story. I feel like it's a, it's like a carbon copy. It's like every girl got the same mindset from the media and the the culture. You know what I'm saying? So, show. I mean, Austin over here in Dallas, where he's from. I'm right in uh, East Fort Worth. So, hey, I'm I'm thankful to know. He's, hey, you say you say you in the Dallas area? Yeah, I'm in DFW. Okay, boy, I heard, boy, I heard that that was one of the worst areas to for y'all to be looking for somebody in. I don't even date in, in Dallas and DFW. I'm, I, I, <laughs> Is that bad, brother? I don't even date out here because wow. seeing the types of women I've come across, man, it's just they got a sense of believing that you're this kind of guy and it's not even the person. They're just, they, you got to you gotta come with game. I'm like, I didn't even learn game from my father or my friend. My friends knew this game stuff. I'm I'm being myself, I'm being respectful and kind. I've opened doors and stuff, pull out your chair. You know what I'm saying? That kind of stuff is, I'm, I'm more shiver, uh, sh shiver, you know what I'm saying? I believe in a gentleman way. But that's the thing. They don't they don't know that. They're just used to that whole, like, I'm a thug and I'm going to be hard to make you feel good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, feel for, I feel for young brothers like you, you know, like I said, because I know, like I said, if I was like y'all, it, it wouldn't be a question. You know, like I said, I'm telling you, I was so, I'm very serious about it. It wouldn't be a question. I wouldn't dare date a woman in the United States of America if I was y'all. I'd be out of here. Cause it just you get too much cooperation overseas, way too much cooperation. Man, and I have to even ask questions because I feel like when well, most of these ladies are hiding so much in the past, like oh yes they are. That because oh, the body yes. counts like a bigger deal now. It's like oh, wait, yes. wait, is there more that you do that you've been doing? I have not. I can't find out. Did you gonna tell me that I might not pick you? Then I'm not gonna deal with you because that that tells me something right there. There's a problem. You can't tell me that then. There's something more you've done in your past that's gonna haunt you that might affect this relationship. That's it. Yeah, yeah, man. Like I said, bro. Like I tell y'all, get y'all, get y'all passports and be on y'all king, y'all king mentality with that. Be a passport king. There you go. Yeah. All right, brother. I'm, I'm gonna have to go ahead and let, let you go and get to the next brother. Peace. All right. All right, Sergeant Tyson. Sergeant Tyson. Yes, sir. 
I've been trying to get on your channel for a while, a while back, but I've been working too much. So I, I, I'm, What's on your mind, brother? Yeah, Michael B. I've been there since high school. Not even high school, throughout grade school, middle school, high school, and stuff. I was in special ed throughout uh, junior high school and stuff, but they, um, the teachers had to go to the nearest high schools or the nearest colleges to get the um, to get work for me because I was too advanced and I was trying to test out. My mom didn't know how, how to. So after that, you know, after that, I joined the military. After you know, I graduated in 1997. I went into the military. I'm still serving right now. I'm right now going on 25 years. Um, so far, for to this day, I'm still being called by women, lame, corny, whatever stuff like that and i'm like how i did the things i need to do i put my i'm a single brother, father I put my brother listen listen brother it's not even for you to rationalize that at this point i say because they literally have a severe mental illness okay i'm not about to be listening to severely mentally ill people who need help assess my life it's not doing it so now i'm about to join the passport bros because i got one more year of child support left I'm working on my passport. I'm looking to go to uh -oh. go to the. Uh oh, uh oh. <laughs> well, you know, you can get the passport even though you pay child support. You don't have to worry about that as long as you don't uh, worry about twenty five hundred. Yeah, they took it. They took it from me after a bunch of. Uh, this is New York City child support from New York City. I hate them. Oh, they oh, raped me. You in me. liberal New York? Yeah, I used to live in. I used to live in Queens. Now I live in New Jersey. I own three properties. I'm doing good for myself. I'm just trying to pay off my child support. Work on my passport. I'm gonna go visit the motherland because I'm gonna go to Nigeria and try to trace my family's uh, roots. You gonna, I mean, try, you gonna try to get you get you one of them Igbo women? <sighs> I need a hey. I never been married, but my daughter's through hey, college. You know, you got the the Igbos and and, and uh, uh, Yoruba women, and yeah, you might well when you go over there get get you get you one of them Nigerian women. I think they 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 want them uh, holler at you. Yeah, I've been trying my best on YouTube trying to. Uh, Push out my videos every now and then. I'm like a part-time YouTuber, so okay. between work and home and maintaining homes and stuff, I'm just just doing me. I can't worry about no woman right now. Just wait, make sure my son goes to the yeah, airport to the high paper, school. Take care of your paper and your and your get your financial house in order. I always tell men that get your financial house in order first, then you start getting on your passport king. Uh, uh, moving around, you know what I'm saying? You become a passport king then, because you can't you can't do it. Your financial house isn't in order, so get that in order first. Yes, sir. I'm not gonna hold you up. I got a long drive back home. I just came from working New York City in the Bronx, doing 16 hours straight. Oh, yeah. I remember working 16 hours, brother. Oh, I've been there, done that. I think the longest I've ever worked on a shift before is 26 and a half hours. I never do it again. Well, I'm not going to yeah. ever do it again, <laughs> but, you know, that was a long time ago. But like I said, yeah, I, I wish I would work for anybody 26 hours now. Well, I work for myself, so, you know, if I do yeah, it, I do it myself uh, now. Yeah, I work for New York City, so uh, it's just, okay. I mean. Yeah, 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 I get you. God bless y'all in New yeah. York City. I was there a few weeks ago. I'm glad I moved. Of course, the living over here, over there is crazy. Uh, I, that's why I left. I was like, I couldn't do it. I was my house. I'm not going to pay somebody's mortgage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, in New York City, I can visit, have a good time, and carry my happy self right back to Texas. Yes, sir. But uh, hopefully when I get home, I'm going to do a YouTube channel and thank you on my – shout you out on my channel and stuff. And, uh, All right, brother, I appreciate you. Be careful on the road. Same here. Thank you, All man. Right, brother. Bro brother – uh, no, that's not the one I'm looking for. Brother Will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, Uncle Phil, can you hear me? I, I can hear you, bro. You you on the road too? I'm on the road too, and funny enough, I'm in New York too. You getting all oh, the New York, York people? Okay. New yes, York, sir. Man. I'm in Queens right now, but you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and park because I just got to where I need to go. So let me just chat with you real quick. You know, okay. thank you for thank you for having me on, but uh, Uncle Phil, I really appreciate it. No problem. You know. Brother. Um. So yeah, about the Michael B situation, you know. I, I couldn't wait to jump on this live with you, Uncle Phil. I couldn't even hold you because, like, I just really resonate with Michael B specifically because I feel like I, I'm really cut. Well, not 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 the famous actor part, but just in terms of, like, the things that he probably liked that, that they called him corny or lame or what have you. Um, you. You see myself, like, as a kid, 
I love stuff like anime, Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Bleach, all that stuff. I, you know, so everybody in the chat that knows about that stuff, you know, I so still like it now. Is, you used to watch Nin Ninja Scroll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ninja Scroll <laughs> all, was the truth, wasn't it? <laughs> all of that, I mean, Bell, all of that. Came out. <laughs> that was the stuff, you know. Yeah. And then, you know, they just call. You know, I'm I'm 28 now, but like growing up, they just call you lame. You know, I was a skinny, lanky kid. Nobody really invited me to parties or anything like that. And, you know, I'm just like, all right, I went through like a whole metaphor, you know, like, you know, evolution, I want to call it. You know, I got bigger. I started getting to the weight room. And then, like, if I want to say, like, I'm not like I'm not a Pookie and Ray Ray. Right. Never been, never will be. But then, like, I started, like, getting into stuff like tattoos. I don't you can't see them now, but I got like tattoos and like earrings. So, like. I'll get girls that'll talk to me and they'll thinking like, you know, I got bodies and all this other stuff. I'm like, yo, the only bodies I got is in Call of Duty. I, I, I don't do none of that stuff, right? And then I gotta like check them. And then it's just like, it happens all the time, Phil, all the time. Like now I'm 28. I'm looking back of all the women that I grew up with or whatever, kids, multiple baby daddies, domestic violence. And then like, they'll be hitting me up when I post something and they'd be like, Oh, you, you looking kind of good. How you doing? I'm just like, I'm doing good. I'm, I hope you're doing good. I'm gonna keep moving. Cause I'm not, if you didn't want me back then, don't want me now. And then now I got my passport and funny enough, um, I'm actually going to Thailand within a month. Um, I think oh. I leave, uh, when do I leave? I leave, um, March 31st. So I'm going to be there for 20 days. And oh, then I actually got to Thailand for almost three weeks. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm gonna be living like a king too. This is my second time there. Oh, oh boy! I second think time there. Women lost his brother. I think y'all didn't lost him. It's finished. It's finished. And you know, and and one thing, Uncle Phil. I, you know, I I just want to ask you one thing, and it's just like a little bit of a challenge because I I I really believe in a, a lot you say. The only thing I want to kind of combat you a little bit on is about the about you say you shouldn't get a woman from overseas and bring them back to the USA. Now I'm from Queens, Queens, you know, I'm from, you know, I'm from New York. New York is home to me. And you know, I, you know, I, I'm talking to somebody over there in Thailand, you know, I'm probably going to go see her. You know, I've been talking to her for about a couple of years. Ideally I would want her to come here. You know, I wouldn't want to go to Thailand. Well, well let, me, let me, since you told me that, right. The only yeah, reason yeah. I say that is because there's been many men that didn't read the room right with that particular woman. She gets here, marries you, stay with you two years. To, to and then it can divorce you, have citizenship, and then go mm -hmm. on with somebody else. That was a plan from the get go. So to mm -hmm. prevent some of that, to prevent that, just keep them over there. And also, no, number two, that. you don't want them to come here and then be indoctrinated oh, yeah. with the Western world and all them modern women right there in New York City because you know they're there. You don't oh. want them to her to be indoctrinated with those modern women, and then that's true. Up bringing up the feminism and all the other isms they got in this this country. So that's why I say keep them over there in the environment that created, you know, the uh, uh, her to be the way she is and and maintain okay. what she is of the environment that she's in, and she's not in a feminist environment. I got I mean, you. I got you. you Look, brother, it's your world. Yeah, you want to bring yeah. it back? That's on that you. But that was the only thing I had to say. I just wanted to ask you that personally because I, I believe so much into the passport movement. I got my passport. I get treated better outside the country than I do in the country. You know, so all you, that well, stuff. Why would you want to bring her back here then? Uh, because, Brother Phil, this is home. I got this. For me, all right, man, let me just show you one. Get, no, 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 no. New York, yes, yeah, she maybe was born there and all that, but get away from that. Get away but brother from Phil, that. New brother York Phil, will always be there when you want to go visit. But it's my family, my family. One of my favorite tattoos right here. My family is what I can't leave. I, I'm so entrenched with my oh, family that on, I can't, on, I can't brother. leave New York for that. Oh man, you don't tell me you can't leave your family. Men have I left got... their family for war. Men have left their family for, for for other, you know, to create families elsewhere. You got even immigrants that are leaving their whole family in another country to come to the United States or wherever they're going. To even make better lives, come come on! I now. got, I, mean, I, I got family, goddaughters. I got little cousins, goddaughters, cousins. I see them every weekend, multiple times a week. Okay, Thanksgiving is over the time. Fly them all <sighs> out to Thailand to come see. You. <laughs> the plan works. I, 
<laughs> I, I appreciate it's the only advice. You, but like me, I don't have that kind of attachment yeah. like that. I love my family, but I don't have that kind of attachment. It's, I'm like, right, look, family's everything. I, I I'm Haitian. I was I'm Haitian you. also. I'm Haitian also. So family's really big on in in our culture. Shout out to the Haitian sister that was uh, on the line. Shout out to her. And and you know, family. Big black American culture too. It's big. Yeah. But I'm just saying that yeah. I have no problem going where I need to go, do what I need to do, because doing what I need to do, right, has yeah. afforded me the opportunity. Well, I've even mm. taken family to to the That's African true. continent, right? I'm telling That's my true. mom right now, I'm, I'm going to help my mom get her passport, and I'm about to take her somewhere. If I wasn't doing what I was doing, I couldn't afford to do that for my mom. My mom was going to pay a dime. I get that. I get that. I, you know I'm going to take like all this advice in, yeah. Forever. That's true. That's true. I just love to see them. But uh, but the, the passport bros, pa get out of this country. The women over here is... I, and it's not like I can't get a woman over here. I got the pick of the litter. And it's like, I just don't want none of them. They just, don't, they don't hold the values that I feel are necessary for like a, a man of today's age. But either way, I won't keep you up too long, Uncle Phil. I'm a big fan. I know you get a lot of love from New York. I'm one of them. Of Shout out to you. Keep doing your I thing. Love, all right. I love coming to New York. Every time I come to New York, it's nothing but love when I go out there. It's, yeah, I'm yeah. In Times Square, somebody always run up to me when I'm in Times Square. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we love you out here. We love you out here. And then I'm sorry you had that issue at the at the airport. That's just kind of how we do over here. Everybody kind of got that oh, attitude. Yeah, so. that's why don't, I came back from Kenya. Don't, yeah, don't, brother, don't, hey, don't. This, hey, bro, real quick. Man, yeah, yeah. I love the upgrade y'all did LaGuardia. LaGuardia. Oh, yeah. yeah. No more. <laughs> that was a hood rat spot. That's that where all the spirits in the apple. frontiers. That's where all the spirits in the frontiers came out of. We don't. It's, it's looking good now. It's looking good now. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, well, all all right, right Uncle Phil. Respect. Right, peace, Thank brother. you so much for having me. Take care, right, brother. All right, let, let's let's get Brother Grove in here. Uh, how you doing? How you doing? This this uh, uh, Brother well, Grove. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. I I really want to touch on uh. You know, I was watching a young man before and him being uh, a little paranoid of leaving his uh, leaving New York. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, it's my personal belief that especially every young man should do their best to get out of the country uh, just to live. I lived in Europe for two years in the 90s and then I, I worked in Thailand in the early 2000s and um, came back because, you know, I, I had a sickness in my family. But and things were a lot different then than it is now as far as just just the dynamics between men and women it's progressively been getting worse but I, I think that once 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 he moves the fear will be subsided because what he's worried he's worried about the basic things that we all worry about can I eat the way I want to eat can I you know how do I do this how do I do that the culture but you'll he'll learn very quickly he'll learn the language he'll learn everything he needs to do especially in Thailand Thais are some of the most inviting people that you can that you can have so I talk about that um, one thing I just would touch on because uh you know, my channel, we covered Michael B. Jordan and just the phenomenon of the, the upwardly mobile corny guy. I live in a, a Silicon Valley in San Francisco, uh, Bay Area. And most gentlemen who who did anything with their life, uh, from myself to my podcast partner, to everybody I know, they started off very non-select because we just weren't into the same things that people were into when we were growing up. We were into, uh, I mean, I was into jazz music. I was, and then the first time I traveled, out of the country was because I was playing jazz. Uh, I was into, you know, anime, like the gentleman said earlier. Uh, and, you know, men have to build themselves. Men have to find their way, build themselves. And you don't really start getting money until you're in your 40s sometimes, or maybe 50s. So if you have to build yourself. Sometimes your 30s. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, sometimes people figure it out really, really quickly. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was, doing, I was doing good, man, before I really got into this, because like I said, I was in the petrochemical industry. Oh, okay. I was doing. I was doing good. You know, this that money just helped me to do what I'm doing today. And, and that's that's wonderful. Uh, you know, I I traveled. I played music, and then when I came back, I started working in tech. So it took me it took me some time. I mean, I was like, so this is like maybe my second career. Uh, but now being very comfortable in building myself, uh, a lot of these women don't understand when they see you when you're uh, from let's say I age 14 when you start trying to say hi and you know get a kiss on the cheek maybe to age 22, 23, the person that they're seeing that they may call corny is is a pale representative of the person that you're going to be. Man, if you've peaked at 18, then your life is done anyway as a yeah. man, you know? And they, and because women in 10, and I'm not trying to talk bad about women, but the ladies I've seen have waited at the finish line for dudes and, and tried to say, hey, look, look, we did it, you know? And, uh, and that's not necessarily, you know, the journey that a man built himself 
you know, you get called corny, you get called not select, you get called this, you get called that. You're not into this. You're not fun. You're not cool. You're not a thug, whatever. But uh, being on your purpose is what, what is how it's the only way you win. The only way you can win is to be about your purpose. Any other way, it's just, I mean, unless you've just inherited a bunch of money, I don't know any other way to do it. So uh, when I see a brother like Michael B. Jordan, and I mean, and for all intents and uh, purposes, he's clean, right? Like, I've never heard nothing bad about the guy. I've never heard him doing something. He don't have, like, six kids by six different women. He's he's not out there being future, you know, or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, you know, but he is called corny by people because he doesn't fit that stereotype. And a lot of us, I mean, I was called corny because I like, I like, because I spoke with, because my family insisted that I speak with proper English and I did not speak with slang. And so I was like, well, you're corny because of a proper upbringing. Yeah, because you didn't speak A-A-D-E. That's what it was, right? Yeah. And, uh, and you know, it's and I wasn't allowed, you know, I mean, I could switch with my friends, but I had to be on point when I got to the house. You know, I had to be on yeah. point. My father's a military man. He wasn't having nothing. No if, ands, or buts, you know. My dad from Abilene, Texas, born in 44. He did not care about my excuses. He cared about my achievement, period. And so that, it's just one of those things when I see that, and I see, I see folks uh, go through this. I just tell all the young men out there who are going through it, build yourself, build your purpose, go about your purpose, forget the naysayers. You're going to win if you do it. And victory is sweet when you're sitting there and you can be on a red carpet and say, oh, yeah, I was that corny kid, right? All right, then. And it wasn't even knowledge in his voice. It was just like, gotcha. And so, you know, I appreciate it. You know, and I, she was talking about that young brother earlier. You mentioned Thailand. Yeah. See, like, for me, if, if these young brothers need to start going to African countries because it's more familiar to you. Like, mm-hmm. like going away to Thailand is a totally different culture. Totally nah. different culture. And it could be even culture shock for you because he's right. He maybe can't get certain foods, but in the African continent he can. Mm-hmm. I, well, definitely. I was fortunate. I went to Africa. Uh, my first uh, trip to Africa was, uh, I believe, in ni- 96 and 97. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I... Everybody's now in the audience asking how old I am. But uh, well, what country did you go to? Uh, well, for, first I, I went to North Africa, so I went to Morocco. I went to Egypt. My uncle was living in South Africa, so I visited my uncle in South Africa. Then my uncle took me to Madagascar. That was right after apartheid. Yeah, it was. Oh wow! He was playing for the symphony orchestra. Okay. And so uh, my my uncle Phil, <laughs> my my uncle Phil, which is funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, and then he said, "Let's go to Madagascar," and we went to Madagascar, and uh, it was it was beautiful. It was beautiful. It was enlightening. I, I spent three months, you know, of my life that I will always, always remember. And and it was three months of an education. So I did that before I went, went really started going to Asia on my own as an adult. Uh, you know, I was in it. I I was I was a passport bro the old fashioned way. I I was working, you know, when I when I was over yeah. there. So and that's that, and that's the thing. So uh, actually, I'm a, I'm a huge fan. Uh, it was the first time I come up. I like to thank you for this time. Uh, I I uh, uh, I watch your content. I find you very straightforward and and even and matter of fact, and I, I truly appreciate that. Well, brother, I, I appreciate you coming up. I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I actually seen a couple of y'all videos, you and your partner's videos. Oh, I, I saw one today actually. Oh. Um, so so I'm always on the on the YouTube streets watching more than what people think I watch. So oh. so I already know who you were when you came up. Oh, well, I, I, I appreciate you letting me up, and I it's my sincere hope that you enjoyed the video. Oh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was well put together. Well, we, we do our best, you know. We do our best to, to have a proper representation of our skill set. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Well, all right, brother, I appreciate you. All right, thank you. All right. All right, Brother James. Uncle Phil, how's it going, my man? Man, it's going, it's going good. Uh, well, talk, talk to me, James. Well, fellow, like, what you think about fellow your boy, Mike? Fellow Houstonian like yourself, my brother. I couldn't hear what you say. I'm a fellow Houstonian like yourself. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, what do you think about Michael B. Jordan? Well, just like all other brothers said, the same thing happened to me uh, all throughout pretty much high school into college. And, uh, you know, the the thing is, the thing about it, Uncle Phil, is sometimes it's it's those guys that are looked down on is the ones that they end up looking for afterwards. You know, like after... You know, when the guy like the Pookie and the Ray Rays treat them bad, then the guys that they've neglected before, you know, it's like they suddenly, some of them have this wake up call like, well, 
that's the guy I should have been with. That's the mm -hmm. one I should have I should have gone after, right? So good for Michael B. Jordan, man. I would have done the same thing. I would I would have I would have checked. He actually he probably said less than I would have said, <laughs> you know, just to be honest. But uh, you know, I myself am am a passport bro, a passport king, as as you you know, as we say it now. And uh actually, I'm actually leaving in June. I'm actually moving to Mexico. I have a fiance. We've been together about five years now. So uh, we already planning a business. What down city there. in Mexico are you moving to? Uh, Monterey. You going to Monterey? Okay. Yes, sir. Monterey. Actually, we just I just got back from uh, San Chris, Cristobal. If I'm actually pronouncing it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, they, her, and her parents took me on a birthday trip. It was my birthday on the second. So they took me. To, they took me on a birthday trip there. I just got back. Um, I think it was Mon Monday. I just got back last Monday. So um, yeah, in June I'm actually leaving. Uh, I'll be moving there. I work 100% remotely, so it, it's pretty much a no. Oh, so you're gonna be doing good. You are gonna get that American dollar, and, and you and you working remotely. Yes, sir. And she also she has a good. She's a pretty much engineer over there. You know, see, she was. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm glad you brought that up. Y'all see what he just said? His woman's an engineer. In other words, she got something going on. He just didn't pick up some little some little female off the streets, how some of these dudes are doing. No, he actually got a woman who got some, some education and sense. Well, okay, yes, continue. sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, she's an engineer. She works for pretty much uh, as a company, uh, Telmex. It's one of the largest, or probably the largest telephone company in Mexico. And, and let me tell you something, Uncle Phil. Since, you know, some of these brothers that have, you know, it don't, and it don't necessarily have to be a Latin woman. It could be, you know, any other foreign woman, right? But some of these brothers could probably attest that these women, these foreign women, they had, they can handle their own. They, they know what it's like to, to be hard workers and not depend on, on guys. But the, what I love about my fiance is, you know, we're actually getting together and building things. She's not depending on me. And, you know, some guys would probably say, well, she's from Mexico, man. She wants a green card. We not if that was so, she would have been here a long time ago. We're actually planning our life over there in Mexico. So, yeah, I have family here in Houston and Louisiana, but I'm going to build over there, brother. So um, that's why I said, man, brothers, if y'all don't have your passports, man, go get them. I'm telling you, it's one of the best things y'all can do. Well, let, well, let me let me ask you a question because this, yeah. I mean, because I have to ask the 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 area you're at, I mean, how's the issue with all the the cartel situation? You know what, you know what, uh, Uncle Phil, pretty much I've been traveling back and forth there, uh, the last five six years, and I have yet to interfere with cartel. Pretty much, Monterey is a is an Americanized city. It's it's an mm -hmm. industrial city. It's a lot of American businesses there, actually. I've ran into some Americans over there that pretty much when they retire, they move over there. Mm -hmm. So, and I've asked them the same thing. Hey guys, have you come in the car? No, nope, no cartels here. It's just, the thing is you don't, there are certain areas you don't travel to alone, you know, but when you're within the vicinity or the city limits of Monterey, there's, there's no cartels there, man. It's, it's, it's pretty much, you know, quiet, um, yeah, they have their, their problems like any other city, but no, personally. What about, well, let me ask you a question about the police. I've heard stories about the police. So even my wife, you know, she has told me about, you know, because my, my wife, you know, she says the biggest reason why she wouldn't really want to go too many times to Mexico mm -hmm. is because, you know, say some of the police that do work with the cartel, they'll even kidnap your daughters, you know? Right. And, and so, so, but it depends on certain areas and, and everything. So, how right. is the police over there? Well, I, I've never, I've never personally. Uh, the only thing I've, I've heard about the police there is, of course, you know, um, it's like uh, it's different than here. You know how how most police here, you know, you you get stopped for a traffic ticket or whatnot. You know, you can't bribe your way pretty much to get out of that ticket. But in Mexico, you get pulled over by police. You know, you can pretty much offer them a hundred, two hundred pesos, and they'll let you go. You know, that's pretty much the from what i've heard right but as far as for like them working with cartel i'm pretty sure some of them do 
but I've personally never heard of heard of a situation about that. Mm-hmm. Um, some some may have, but uh, particularly with that, no, no, I, I've I've never come across it. Okay, yeah, the other brother that came up, I think, a few weeks ago. He was living in Mexico with his wife, you know. Mm-hmm. So he yeah, has quite a few brothers that's act- actually going to Mexico and, and yeah. getting their wife over there. It, it, it makes it, it it's a no brain, Uncle Phil. I mean, if you if if you you know, it, like myself, have a have a remote job, you're making U.S. dollars, and you live in there. I mean, your money stretches a little further, right? There's a lot more things you can do there. Um, of course, the only thing you don't that I've learned you do not buy there is electronics. Electronics are super expensive, you, so you don't buy electronics there. But everything else, food, the housing, everything else is is cheap, man. I mean, it's a it's a no brainer. Okay, uh, all right, brother. Well, like I said, I uh, uh, hope everything works out well for you. You say you'll be well, yeah. going in, in, in June, and uh, yeah, I'm leaving in June. Yeah, 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 yes, yeah, sir. And tra- transferring your life to to Mexico. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, all right, brother. I appreciate you. Appreciate you, Uncle Phil. All right, brother. Yes, sir. Uh, all, all right. Hold on. Wrong person. I'm trying to click in. Hold on. El Guapo. What's good, sir? How are you, man? Uh, uh, all right. All right. You, you look like you, you. I don't know if your microphone's turned on. It'll sound like you're coming through the speaker, not the mic. Okay. Hang tight one second. I got it. My bad. Here we go. Check one, two. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I, I can hear you. I can hear you. What's on your mind? Man, so I'm going to tell you, uh, if it was if it was up to me, Michael B. Jordan would have uh, some friends that were sage passport veterans, and he wouldn't have gotten himself into some of these issues, you know, with like the Lori Harveys and stuff like that. I think I felt the same way when Tiger Woods got himself in trouble. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I was like, man, if Tiger had a buddy that, you know, knew the game and stuff like that and could show him where the ladies are that would appreciate him, not just because of his money and stuff like that, but treat him well and not come for his neck and stuff like that. Yeah, it would have been better. But I'm proud of Michael, man. He did good, yo. He did good. Let me tell you something. Brother Philip Scott, I'm such a fan. Yo, I love what you do, dog. I love what you do, man. No, I, pre- I appreciate it. I appreciate it. But uh, yeah, man, as a, a passport bro myself, I have a Colombian wife. Um, we just had a son like 11 days ago, you know, and she's a very high value uh, young lady. She's got two master's degrees, makes six figures. And up until having the baby, you know, she was working in D.C. Uh, I'm retiring her now. She's just going to stay home and, and take care of the son. Um, but I talk about this all the time. You know, I give the sisters the first right of refusal if I'm available and on the market. And I, I got out there and kind of like what, what you see happen to Michael, you know, the, the, our, our lovely ladies have sent the worst representatives that they can. And and they kind of force our hand to go. Let me ask you a question, brother. Let, let, see, let me ask yeah. you a question. So, sure. so when they see you with your wife now, have you been asked this question? Well, why couldn't you find a black woman? Uh, not so much anymore. Uh, I walk around with the male version version of a resting bee face. Like I just, I, I'm not trying to, you know, entertain any foolishness. I'm too old for that, man. You well, know, not so. now. I'm talking about in the past when you got you when you let's say even when you first start dating your wife, right. or somebody asks you that question. Shoot, my mom has asked me that question. Oh, my your mom? mom. Here today. Okay. Yeah, my mother was here today, and I love and honor my mother. She is fantastic, one of the best parents that's walking the face of this earth. But I can remember her asking me, she was like, oh, Wapo, why is it that you can't deal with, you know, a, a challenging woman? You don't like to be challenged. I was like, you're absolutely right, Mom. I don't like to be challenged. Not when it comes to a woman. I have my job to do when she has her job to do. You know what I mean? So as a black man, I got to go out here and fight this world. I'm not really for being challenged in my home. And so, yeah, I mean, I get it. I've gotten it from family. I've gotten it from fa- friends. People have the side eye and all that stuff. But when it's all said and done, I've got to live this life. I've got to set this legacy. I got too many people that are counting on me. And my, my wife is supposed to be, or the lady in my life, 
is supposed to be a, a feminine amplifier. She's not supposed to be a detractor or something that pulls away from what I'm trying to do. My humble opinion. Yeah, sir. Well, you know, and you know, you travel. Once you get out of America, nobody care about any of that mess. You know what I'm nobody. saying? You think you thinking that's like a real world thing, but that's an American thing. Yeah. People yeah. don't care you what you do. Country, like, you look, travel, man. You you I, happy? They love it. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. And it's not about the color and all that stuff, man. So it's it's a whole different animal out there. Whole different animal. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I know I've seen, like I say, you've been to Brazil a few times, right? Yeah, I've been going to Brazil for 17 years. I've been doing business in Brazil for like 15. So oh, Okay, so you got businesses. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. One of the most difficult places on the planet to do business we deal in. The brother that was on before you was talking about don't buy electronics in Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same in Brazil. So we have an, uh, uh, an import license in Brazil. So we can take small electronics, things like NASA's, the studio equipment we had and stuff you use and take it down there and um, sell it legally. So I've been doing that for a while. Well, I know like like when I went to Kenya and I was bringing back some things for some of my um, some of my team in Kenya, because I have a team in Kenya as well. And the brother was like, hey, open it, open, take it out the box and just put yep. it in your bag. Don't, don't, yeah. don't, don't uh, uh, come through like that because they will hit you over the head with some taxes. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah. yeah. I say, because, you know, over here, we can just bring stuff. You know, it don't matter. We can bring stuff back. It don't really say money unless it's alcohol or something like that. But, man, it's like some of these countries want to tax you. I think um, years ago, Brother O'Shea had told me about how Uganda taxed the hell out of him for bringing some uh, desktop computers in there. Yeah, there are ways to do it, and I don't want to give away too much. Live, no, no, don't give yeah. up the game on, on camera. Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, you. what you want to do is you want to make it seem like it's your personal stuff. Your personal allotment is always going to be more for than you get for brand new items, which is always going to be more than you get for items that you're going to resell. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. De definitely, you know, keep, keep, uh, uh, take care of your son. Cause they, they, listen, them days about them kids being small, they yeah. get, they grew up so quick. <laughs> you're like, where'd yeah, the time sure. go? Yeah. It's, it's, it's hard to imagine. I'm, I'm loving every minute. I got to go back to work this week. I'm not looking forward to it, but at least my wife is home. You know what I'm saying? Good. Yeah. Cause you won't let the lady stay home with the children. I, I was a firm believer. I never had my children in daycare. I refuse. Yeah. I won't yeah. do it. And, and I made sure not to do it. So yeah, brother, def definitely shout out to you, man, man. Thank you so much for having me up. I'm gonna keep watching, man. I love what you do, brother. All right, brother. I appreciate you. I'll keep watching. I, I, I seen your content as well. Oh, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Take care, sir. All right. Take care. Salute to you. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, let me get this off of here because I have to get up off of here. I got to go cook my dinner. Um, I got some good ground lamb I need to go make and my white rice and some chickpeas I got to go make. Um, I have been looking forward to it. I know I got a few people left, but sorry, I, I, I got to go. It's been a little while, but, uh, maybe try me next time. But like I said, past two weeks, um, we won't be doing any shows. Your brother be in South Africa, uh, enjoying that good, his good time, good food. And, uh, if I, I see anybody, you know, I'll, I'll let them know that you brothers are looking for wives and, and maybe, maybe if they weren't looking for y'all, I'll interview them or something and we'll share when we get back. But thank you all for listening on both platforms, Facebook and YouTube. We'll see you on the next one.